Last week I did something that was a little unfair. I kind of went into detail about something and I didn't really explain it all that well, and that's on me. I'm sorry for that. That's my fault entirely. So this week, as promised, I'm going to go into full detail about what I was talking about, and hopefully give you a little insight too. I'll start with the bit that was confusing, this footage I shot during a World of Tanks racing event. I mentioned in the last show that this frustrated opponents to no end, but I didn't really get into what's actually going on here. I mean, it looks like, well, I guess it really doesn't look like much of anything, really. I get rammed and then turn sideways in front of another tank, so what's the big deal? I kind of fell into a trap that a lot of online people tend to fall into, and it's that I made the assumption that you guys have the same life experiences that I have. Or you speak the same unspoken rules that I know, or you speak the same jargon that I know. Yeah, that was a, it was just bad on my behalf, and I'm sorry for that. So let's start from scratch. In order to understand why this was so effective, we've got to backtrack a lot. Time to roll out. Well, let's start with the game. Let's go to World of Tanks Racing Event. It was a special event that took place in late September through early November 2014. Wargaming repurposed the unused port map for high-speed runs in a modified chaffee, and credit where credit's due. They made a really good combat race course, considering that World of Tanks is not a racing game. As you maneuver through the course, there are jersey barriers that keep two distinct lanes with gaps that can either be shot or jumped through, lots of obstacles to block shots, good straights with pretty consistent corners, uh, mostly solid experience. I say mostly because of gold rounds, but that's another rant entirely. Each team had three identical tanks, and you won by either destroying the other team entirely, or getting into the finish zone and capturing it uncontested for the countdown timer duration. Getting damage while in the cap means the timer resets, so the end circle is a really messy rugby scrum if it comes to that. So the general gist of the game, you race to the end point, you hold the cap uncontested, your team wins, everybody celebrates. At least on your team. Now we go to the individual missions. Now, I, I have a problem with individual missions in a team-based game, and I could do an entire episode on that, and probably will someday, but let's keep this focus on World of Tanks racing for right now. The event had several missions that were catered to the individual players. Team Start was for a Platoon 3, and after finding out it was a gold fest, I didn't even bother after one night of doing it. The big meta goal was to win 50 rally battles and earn 1,000 capture points over the duration of the event, so a lot of people were trying to get that. It's the last two that made things interesting, Winning Sprint and Racer. Racer kept track of your top win streak, Winning Sprint is what most people actually played for in individual battles. In order to get experience and win in-game money, you not only had to win, but you also had to survive the battle. This made the game pretty much all or nothing. You make one mistake or you get destroyed, you earn nothing. So, selfishly speaking, you had to play the game to survive just to get rewarded. It was bizarre. Because on one hand, you had this team goal. Everyone had to reach the end point in order to maximize your chances of victory. On the other hand, you had this incredible selfish goal in which you had to get to the end point first to maximize your cap points. So team game, selfish driven results. Okay, so we got that down. Now, we just turn it sideways. People who are longtime fans of the show have been watching me long before I was on Channel Awesome. You might be familiar with the uh, unwritten rules of the drinking game. Yeah. The concept of turning a field sideways is a really old school paintball tactic, mostly from the Woods game, but okay, most five man arena fields are played 2 1 2. Two players go left, one anchors back center, two goes right. After a while, you don't even have to bother walking the field, you just know where people are going to go. But once in a while, you overload one side with one center anchor, and you can just wreak havoc with the other team. This is the core of the concept. Instead of a north south fight, it's now east west. Literally, you've turned the field sideways. This makes the other team react to the unexpected situation while you're acting, and a majority of the time, the team reacting loses. Turning a field sideways is not just a tactic, it's more of a concept. What you're trying to do is you're trying to change things up. You're trying to put your opponent on the back foot so that they're reacting to situations. So, yeah, on one hand, you can literally turn a field sideways, but more often you're doing it in metaphor. For example, we used to have this position called Designated Idiot. This person's job was to put themselves in a position where the other team had to deal with them, and then just be a loud, obnoxious bastard. You guys are being suppressed by a guy should by a second! And because of the taunting and their position, the other team is now forced to deal with the DI. 
As long as they can stay in the game, the DI is now the focal point of the other team, and this frees up the rest of the team to do things like flank, or cover, or reload. Another way to do this, and actually more to the point of this video, is something our team called a speed bump. I've done it many times myself, and from a first person camera it's really hard to show. This is from an old paintball show I did a long time ago, and it demonstrates the concept. Now in this case, Jim has the objective, which is the other team's flag. The other team is going to be in pursuit. So I peel off the trail and start shooting at the other team. This slows them down or just outright stops them. It also works if I'm already set up and Jim runs past me and then I ambush the other team. Better footage of the idea is from a 1987 video called The Winning Game, where they show how it looks with more players. Even with the lower rate of fire of paintball guns of the era, it still works effectively. And it works on many levels. One is surprise, because the other team is expecting to chase, not get shot at. Another is because it's not intuitive to sacrifice yourself. One of the implied goals of the game is personal survival, and that's not necessarily true. We called it speed bumping because ultimately, it's a sacrifice move. I'm not there to stop you, I'm there to slow you down long enough to give my team time to do whatever it is that they need to do. Now I think some of you people can kind of see where we're going with this, so let's get back to World of Tanks. After a night of playing World of Tanks Rally, I noticed a couple things, and the big one is that victory was a coin flip. If both teams made it into the cap point, anyone could win. So I started thinking that it might not be better to try to win as much as try to deny the other team access to victory. So how would I go about doing that? Well, the easy answer would be buy gold rounds. This is using real world money to buy enhanced ammo in the game. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know you can buy it with in-game money, but either way, it's a waste. It took about 20 shots on average to kill an opposing tank, and shots miss. So this is not an optimal option. Idea number two was to focus fire on one opponent. Idea being that if you can get 20 shots on one guy, destroy that tank, you reduce the other team's resources by 33%. Again, not optimal, because if that tank fell behind, or a teammate falls behind, there's no guarantee that we can keep focus fire on one target. And if it involves two other players being on board with the plan, yeah, you ever tried herding cats? So, barring destroying the other team in whole or in part, it became a matter of disruption. Designated idiot, that's pretty much not an option, so I figured I could try speed bumping. Or, more correctly for World of Tanks, roadblocking. But this required a bit of planning and quite a bit of practice. Now, I love me some racing games. I'm not the best Trackmania player, but I love playing it. And you don't want to know how many times I tried to squeeze that one hundredth of a second off the stunt course of hard driving back in the day. So, I played the port course with a racer's eye a couple times to try to see if I can get the most speed out of it. Now, I've noticed that Big Air looks cool, but it's a speed killer. So are most of the obstacles in track terrain, so I pretty much tried to find ways around them. Not to mention the few unintentional shortcuts that they put in as well. Next were transfers. The track had three locations where you could cross lanes. They had inherent risk, mainly if you were off the jump line, you crash and burn horribly, and the other team is now down the track and gone. Plus, I found that if you were pacing with another tank, they could actually block your transfer with no ill effects to them. It took some practice, but I got the jump lines down well enough to feel comfortable doing them. Finally, bottlenecks and choke points. You ever seen the movie 300? Choke points. I noticed every PvP game has places on the field that it's narrowed down for no other reason than to make combat happen there. In the real world, these suck to be reacting in, but on the acting end, they are amazing. After some study, I saw that, realistically, there were only two good choke points that I could exploit. The bridge top, because it killed momentum, and this part near the end, because tanks trying to dodge me might end up in the drink. It took a little bit of tweaking, but once I had it dialed in, I felt comfortable with it, and I was like, okay, I'm cool with this, and I put it in my bag of tricks. Of course, the way I'm talking, it sounds like this is a surefire way of victory, right? No. In order for this to work, a lot of things had to go right, and some were out of my control. First, I had to get into a lead position, or at least ahead of the opposing team's tanks. Second, I had to make a transfer and maintain speed. Third, I had to have enough room ahead of the opponents to set up the roadblock. Fourth, I had to survive being shot at from behind by three tanks. Fifth, even if I did all that, they could still swerve around me at the last second because the choke points could be driven double wide. All of this was assuming that my teammates weren't also trying to check me into the barriers so they could get to the finish line first, or I wasn't being trolled or shot at by my own team. I actually started doing delay starts to kind of thwart this, because I knew the spots where I could pull ahead of my own team and by taking better lines. A majority of the time, I didn't even bother doing the roadblock. I only used it when I saw that it was needed. But when I did use it, it had an interesting side effect. It made opponents angry. 
One player really, really wanted to destroy me after I had blocked him and a teammate on the bridge choke point. I think he realized that I had just stopped his team from winning and decided that he was going to destroy me rather than finish. Okay, so beyond patting myself on the back here, what's the point of this entire video? Well, it's a lesson. Okay, maybe several lessons. The first one ties into last week's show. Creativity is not just about building stuff. It's about being able to look at things in a new way. It's also about taking stuff you know works in other places and adapting it to new situations. And it's also about being fearless, for lack of a better way to put it. It takes guts to try something that you're not sure is going to work or not. And failure is not always bad. As I said before, a lot of creative people that I know are not afraid to fail. They actually kind of worry if something works the first time. Second is a lesson for all gamers. You can still win without personal glory. The personal missions were very specific pertaining to how to get rewarded. I had to survive, the team had to win. I could achieve both of those things by letting my teammates get the capture points and I just had to play smart. Thing is that given the time frame of the event, I knew I was going to get a thousand capture points regardless, so I could just concentrate on helping my team win. Win as a team, not as a group of individuals. Third, never assume people are going after the same goals you are. I used opponent assumptions to make the roadblock work, and in the case of World of Tanks, just because you're here to get to the finish area first doesn't mean I am too. Unspoken rules are not meant to be broken, they just don't exist. Fourth, don't commit to one tactic in any given game, especially one that requires so many variables or that everyone already knows. I used to tell people in my paintball show that you enter a field with a bag of tricks, and the winner is whoever can use the right tricks out of their bag. The more you know, the better you do. Being prepared to flow with the situation helps a lot. And lastly, and this is a lesson I already kind of knew, people get mad when you break the unwritten rules. I've had people get angry at me in paintball games for actually using camouflage and being sneaky. The same thing happened in tanks because they said I was using an underhanded tactic by roadblocking. You know, you know, in both cases, I heard players say a lot of the same things directly at me after the game was over. Oh, that's not how real men play. You know, they call me a noob or a... It's a family show. I think I'll let you imagine exactly what they said. But in both cases, it's almost like they think that shootout should be like Old West style. You know, two guys out in the middle of Main Street, the hands like this, and one yells, draw, and then they, you know, but... In the real world, that's a 50-50 coin toss, and I don't like those odds for survival. You know, whenever these guys would complain at me, it's almost like I'm the bad guy for... thinking. Huh. Good shot. I had to be. <laughs>